Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. So this is gonna be the first video on my DCT swap. Now, if you haven't been following along, what I'm doing is taking a DCT from an N54 E93 335 uh, that was accident damaged. Uh, I've got the motor and the transmission out there and I'm gonna be swapping this gearbox into my E92 335 N54. Um, I'm not gonna get into the reasons why. I've done a video on why I've chosen this transmission. I'll put a link to that up in the corner. But on this video, I actually wanna get the process started and hopefully help you guys understand what's involved in doing this swap. Now, most of this information has come from a post on Spall Street. I'll put a link to Spall Street down below. And there's also a thread on N54 Tech where I really think, was, which is where this information come from, from 2013. So this sort of swap has been around for quite a long time. It shouldn't be too complicated. Um, okay, so if you're gonna be doing the swap, there's a few things that you're gonna need hardware-wise to make it all happen. Um, since I've got, a sort, got it sort of in front of me, I wanna talk about it. So you're obviously gonna need the DCT transmission. Um, the easiest way to go about it is just get one that's come from an N54 donor car. There are a few different bolt, well, there's two different bolt patterns on the E-series DCTs. There's a six-cylinder and the eight-cylinder bolt pattern that was used in the M3s. But from my understanding, the actual transmission inside is very, very similar. Uh, the gear, the gear ratios I think are the same. Um, the way it all works, the mechatronics unit is all interchangeable. The main difference between the two E-Series M54s is just the bolt pattern. Please correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. So you will need, obviously, the DCT. You will also need, yeah, I'm gonna say it. You're gonna need the DCT diff. So the E-Series M54s were supplied with a 2.5 diff ratio. I mean, that is a, that's, that's so different from like the autos. The autos are 3.46 and I think the manuals are 3.08 off the top of my head. Um, so it is quite a different diff ratio. And the reason you will need a DCT one is the way that the, yeah, I guess the, 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 the car monitors the wheel speed and diff ratios. And if the wheel speed isn't matching what it should be doing at 4,000 RPM in fourth gear, it will throw an error code. Um, you can now get around this with custom mapping in XHP, but I think it's probably crucial that if you're doing this swap, just get it working as standard before you start tuning anything. So if you're gonna be doing this swap, make sure you do get yourself a 2.56 diff ratio. You can also do it if you've got an M3 rear end. So if you've done an M3 conversion and you have the M3 DCT ratio, you can do this swap as well, and then you can use the M3 software, and then it will keep the gear ratios all correct. However, it gets a bit messy. So I think personally, if I was gonna be doing this, do it this way, well, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, do it with a 2.56 and just use the normal E-Series DCT software. Because basically I'm gonna be using software on my car that's come straight from this. It's not modified, nothing's played with. It should just work as if it's come from BMW out of the box. So once you've got the diff, uh, tail shafts, oh, it's a bit of an unknown one. I can't say for sure, but. From what I can tell, if you've got an automatic with a small housing diff, you can use the standard tail shaft. If you've got a large housing diff, you will need to get the tail shaft from your vehicle with a large housing diff. These are telescopic, which is what I think causes a little bit of confusion on what fits what. Um, but just keep that in mind. Do some research into the tail shaft. I've got, I've got an auto tail shaft, a small housing diff in my car, but I have got this one here if I do need to use it anyway. Um, once you've got that sorted, the other tricky thing with the hardware side of these is the way that the transmission connects to the engine. Most N54s have, well not most, all the early N54s have an eight bolt crank. I've got two eight bolt crank motors sitting right here. And you can see that there are eight bolts that hold the flywheel onto the crank. Now the DCT has a very different flywheel to the manual and the 6AT cars. So if you wanted to use the flywheel that come with say you bought a donor car like this, you need to make sure that it's gonna have the same bolts to bolt that flywheel to your motor. Now my motor being, an, it's a late 07 car, it has an eight bolt flywheel. This is an early 09 car, so it has the newer six bolt flywheel. Now I could obviously just drop that motor into my car, but it seems a bit silly taking the motor out of mine when it's all working. So what I've gone for is, an M factory eight bolt DCT flywheel. You can get an eight bolt DCT flywheel direct from BMW. From what I understand, there were a very, very small number of cars in late 2008 that still had an eight bolt flywheel and a DCT. So there is a BMW part number for an eight bolt dual mass flywheel, but they're quite expensive and pretty hard to come by. As far as I'm aware, you can't actually buy one from BMW worldwide right now, but stock's about two or three months away. And in Australian dollars, it's about 800, sorry, $1,800 to get that flywheel. So it's a lot of money. This one is made by M Factory. Now these weren't really originally 
conceived for DCT swaps, but I feel like that's what most people end up buying them for. Um, these are a single mass flywheel and they're about half the weight of the original flywheel. Um, and even just that weight saving makes a big difference on performance. But the issue that people are encountering, and I think the main reason these actually got made about two or three years ago, the dual mass flywheels, as they get a bit of age on them, if you're not familiar, a dual mass flywheel, I mean, it looks very similar to that, but it's a lot thicker. And it's basically got two metal masses, dual mass, that interlink with each other. And then they have a dampener. Yeah, it's, it's like a this. It's like a viscous dampener between the two bits of metal so that as the engine puts force into the gearbox that dampener has to tension up and it sort of it absorbs any yeah it absorbs like clunkiness and it just makes everything feel really smooth that's why most cars come stand most manual cars come standard with a dual mass flywheel it just smooths the drivetrain out the problem is as they get a bit older the dampening starts to die and when you wind the power up the two bits of metal in the flywheel will actually bang on each other and cause false knock so these sort of sprung up on the market two or three years ago to avoid that issue with false knock on a high power dct car and they'd certainly do the job for that that's I guess another part of the reason I went for this, not just price, but it's going to make sure I don't have any issues with false knock. Again, I could have used this engine, but because this DCT has, I think it's about 190,000 Ks on it, I really don't know the condition of the dual mass flywheel in there. And when I start winding the power up, I might run into issues. The downside of the single mass flywheels while we're talking about them is they will cause chatter. Like a single mass flywheel will in a manual car. I'm sure you've heard it like a, a racy manual car in the pits at times and it's chattering along with the gearbox. It can be the same issue with this. I've tried to find as many videos as I can showing the chatter. And to be honest, the videos I've seen, they're not too bad. However, I am aware of people that have removed them from the car. So they bought these as an upgrade and absolutely hated the amount of noise they've made and gone back to the factory flywheel. We're gonna see how it is. It was really the best option I had for what I wanna do with the car. So if it makes a bit of noise, we'll worry about it down the track. Or I might end up buying one of those genuine dual mass eight bolt flywheels. We'll see how we go. No stress. Uh, the way they work, it basically bolts onto the flywheel there. Oh, sorry, bolts onto the, clank, the crank with the eight bolts. And then this little section then bolts onto the flywheel. And that spline joins up with the input shaft on the DCT. Simple little process. Keen to see how it all works out. Uh, I have also got, while I'm standing here, just something else I'm going to do while the gearbox is out. Obviously, you've got DCT fluid. I'm going to go with the Penrite fluid. I've used the Penrite transmission fluid in my 6AT. That car's making over 600 wheel horsepower. The Penrite BMV, which is for the ZF transmissions, works quite well. And this is supposed to be absolutely fine with the ZF DCTs. We'll see how it goes. Again, it's untested. I don't know anyone that's running the Penrite with the DCT. We'll see if there are any problems, any clutch slip, et cetera, et cetera. Also got an aftermarket filter. This is the main pan filter in the DCT. It sits at the bottom of the box. And that is the pan gasket just there. And then we've got the side filter. I'm calling it the side filter. God knows what it actually is. But it goes into that little section right there. So I've got a bit of a service to be done on this before it goes in the car. My mate that works at BMW, he said a lot of the warranty work that they did on these DCT transmissions was actually due to this o-ring failing up on the me mechatronic sleeve so i have ordered direct from bmw for like 40 bucks an o-ring i'm gonna be really annoyed if it's just a generic universal o-ring but we've got an o-ring coming for that sleeve there and i thought while the transmission is out considering i bet this thing's never been taken apart i bet it's never been serviced i'm gonna do the gasket on the mechatronics pan which is this side pan because obviously you cannot do that gasket once it's in the car just in case any of this weeping is from that just a few things to note, make sure you get it serviced before you throw it in. Okay, that is the main hardware covered. Where it gets a little bit more technical is other bits and pieces that you need to make the car work with the DCT. So, first things first, and hopefully you saw the video that I did the other day, you will need an MSD81 ECU. They actually come out, and I've got the dates here so I don't get it wrong. Third month, 2008, all N54s should be equipped with an MSD81. So you're only going to need the MSD81 if yours was made before March 2008. Mine being manufactured late 2007 means I did need to do the MSD81 upgrade, which I did successfully do, and I'll put a link to the MSD81 upgrade in the corner, whichever one it is, if you want to check that out, because I've only just finished that. So the other thing you will need is a DSC pump. Now, the DSC pump that's compatible with the DCTs was actually fitted from September 2008 onwards. So you'll only need to change the DSC pump if your car is manufactured before September 2008. Again, mine falls into that, so we will be changing the DCT pump. And I do have, sorry, DSC pump. 
Uh, I've actually got the DSC pump out of this and another parts car that will do the job. So we're good to go there. The other thing connected to the DSC pump is the DSC sensor. Under the driver's seat, there is a, it's like a, it's a G sensor really, and it's how it, the car picks up the yaw. That sensor, again, it's from September 08 onwards. You will need to replace that if you're going for the DCT. The reason the DSC pump and the DSC sensor need to be changed for the DCT is they run custom software yeah, it's custom software on the DSC system or the traction control system to suit the DCT. Obviously, it will use different algorithms to control slides and power and all that sort of stuff. So you need to make sure that you can run software on the DSC pump that's compatible with the DCT. That's where it comes in. September 09 is the changeover for the DSC stuff. Lastly, and it's one of the things that I don't need to do on my car, is the JBBE module. It turns out that if yours was manufactured after September 07, your JBBE module will, will be compatible with a DCT. Pre-2000, pre-September 07s, the JBBE module won't actually talk to the DCT transmission and you will need to upgrade it. Um, I'm going to gloss over that because I don't need to upgrade it, but just something to keep in mind if you're pre- September 07, you will need a JBE module. Now, once you've got the MSD81, the DSC pump, and a JBE module that's compatible with your DCT, or the new DCT, the other things you're gonna need are the shifter, or gear selector. Um, now on a DCT, yeah, it's made up of three main components. You basically got the shifter assembly, the park brake lockout is a separate little module, and also the sport button is its own little connector and module. Um, I'll pan over what they look like. They're all up in there at the moment. Um, but once you've got all of that hardware that's just been mentioned, you're actually ready to start the swap. And this is where it gets a bit complicated, and it's the one part of my conversion that I've not quite finished, and it's something that I might go inside just to highlight what's going on. You will, oh, I've almost forgot as well about the wiring. So the DCTs obviously have their own wiring harness. Although I think that is the same connector, it is pinned differently to it is to how they pin them out on the 6ATs. I might actually confirm that when I get my one off if someone's interested. But I think according to the TIS sites I've been looking at, it's actually the same connector as the ZF6, but it is pinned differently. So if you're going to do this swap, try and get this harness here. And it runs from the back of the DCT up to here, up to your DME box with these connectors here. Sorry, guys these connectors here. Now, the ones that we're actually interested in when we're doing the swap is this X6031 and X6021, this blue and black one. They're the main two which we need to hook into to get the DCT working in my car. Now, for the rest of it, I'm gonna actually go onto the computer and screen record how we're gonna do the wiring. So on that link in the spool street just below, there's two different ways of doing the wiring, so I'll talk through what we're gonna do Shortly, actually, I'll just show you quickly. The first method that has been around since 2013, people would actually completely make the harness between these two plugs and the shifter, um, which will work, but it sounds like a lot more work than if we can just use some of the wiring that's already in the car. If you are a manual transmission, you will need to make the harness completely from those plugs down to the shifter. But if you're a 6AT, you can make use of most of the wiring that's already going to the center console. Anyway, let's head into the computer. We'll do some screen recording and I'll talk you through how I think I'm gonna do my wiring process. Um, so basically what we've got up on the screen here is the wiring diagram for the harness that you need to make to connect the DCT shifter, which is the GSW unit. Uh, however, along with the GSW unit or module, you have the DCT sport button and the DCT parking lock. So these three modules here need to be wired in to the vehicle so that they function and can essentially control the DCT. The other thing that these three do, they act as a gateway, I guess, between the DCT transmission and the vehicle itself, so that the DME and the car and the DSC all knows exactly what the transmission is doing. So it's not just a matter of connecting these three units to the transmission, you've got to connect these three units to the car as well. Now, uh, before we get into the detail of this wiring diagram, let me just show you a bit more simpler version to help you visualize what's going on. So this here was actually drawn up by Oleg, I think back in 2013 on the original N54 Tech Post. And it was the way that he sort of laid out the wiring diagram when you make the wiring harness. Up in the top here, we've got the connectors X6021 and X6031. 
please keep these in your mind because these are the main connectors that we need to tap into to connect to the DCT transmission. And these two connectors are both in the DME box in the engine bay. The 21 is the black connector and the 31 is the blue connector. And you can see there he's basically written out that it's a, you need a two meter length of wire down to the GSW module, which is the DCT shifter. Um, he's done, I assume these are centimeters, uh, 30 centimeters sp sprawling off of them, uh, 30 centimeters to go to the sport button, which seems excessive, but I guess you've got a little bit of room for wiring mess ups. 30 centimeters off to the parking lock. Now the parking lock sits just above the main DCT shifter, and it is only two wires that control the parking lock, so it must just be a, basically an on and off power signal. And then he's got a 70 centimeter length that connects to the gear switch lighting. Now the gear switch lighting is the original gear display on the 6AT cars. Um, and it's just handy to tap into a few of the functions to make the DCT work. So coming back to this diagram here, it's basically what you're laid out and what you're making in that black in this window is all of these blue wires. And I mean all of these blue wires from here downwards. Um, and it's all well and good, but obviously that's quite a few wires that you need to make in your harness and then run into the engine bay. The way that I'm going to attack it, at a user or a forum member called AJL, I've got his post up here in 2019, he posted an updated wiring diagram which I definitely recommend having a look at if you're gonna tackle this. Now this is the diagram here. And what he's managed to do is get it all working without needing to go into the engine bay. Now, the caveat with this is, and I'm not really sure exactly where the changeover is, but it's only gonna work on late model E-Series 6AT cars. From what I read on another forum, it may work on all MSD81 equipped 6AT cars, but as my car was originally supplied with an MSD80, this wiring harness isn't going to work. But all that um, AJL has done, he's basically got all of the functions to get the gearbox working from the original connectors. Now these three connectors along the top are the original 6AT connectors down in the center console that connected to the, basically the gear display, the park reverse neutral drive, the Steptronic shifter, so the part that shifts when you're in sports mode, and I can't actually remember what the black connector connects to on the 6AT cars, but I guess I'll find out when I take it apart. Um, but he's managed to pull all of those there. What I've done to try and work out if this is going to work on my car, which is older than AJL's car, is using the BMW TIS wiring diagrams, I traced back all of these connectors. So let me just bring up AJL's wiring again. You can see here he's got the connector X9944, X1561, and X14274, which is just focus on the first one, X9944. And you can see that we have that connector there on my car's wiring harness. So even though my car is an older model, it had all of the same connectors. And I've traced back and all of the functions that AGL is using them for is going to work on my vehicle apart from one. The issue that I come across between AJL's N55 6AT and mine is the way that the shifter paddles actually connect to the JBE module and then how that then connects into the transmission. So the shifter or the shift up and down signals on the original DCT wiring harness are in this connector here X6021 and they're pin number 11 and 12 and they're these two blue wires here. Actually this is Oleg's diagram and you can see how they are originally connecting to pin 7 and 8 on the 6031 on the on, well, and that's how my car will be on the older 6ATs. Oleg actually just mentions repinning them into this location however obviously my car doesn't have on the on the vehicle side on the cabin side of 6021 I don't have any wires in that position. So to get this to work on my car or to get AJL's or wiring harness to work, this lovely one here which is very nicely laid out and quite simple, um, I'm going to connect all of AJL's wires but I'm going to need to disconnect where my JBE module currently taps into the wiring harness here on 6031 which is the blue connector. 
Um, from what I can find out, this, this connection point here, X10808 and X10809, these are actually in the center console. So if I can find these two wires in the center console, I can break them off and then I'll need to run from them into the DME box and I'm gonna to need to connect those two to pin 11 and 12 on 6021. Interestingly, this is the wiring diagram for AJL's car. And you can see his pin 38 and pin 22 from the junction box. They go straight out and into that pin 6021 straight away. So basically all I'm gonna be doing is replicating this section of the N55 6AT. So just, yeah, these two connection points here from pin 38, pin 22, straight into my DME box so that I can access the new 6021 connector and then follow this lovely wiring diagram here. Um, just on this diagram, he's using the three main connectors as I mentioned earlier from the 6AT um, and it, it's pretty basic. We've got the DCT shifter module here, the DCT sport button here and the DCT steering lock here and they all splice in. The only other wires that I will need to connect are, I've basically got these two red wires here, pin three and four, they're actually CAN bus. Um, AJL connected those down onto the, well he's got it here actually, splice into the connection point X10545. And if you put that connection point into BMW TIS, it does show you where it is, but it's the, he's basically just connecting into the X14271 connector on the junction box, which is that connector there. So I'm gonna to have to run pin three, four, and five down to my junction box or the JBE module, and that should be it. Yeah, with those three connectors now connected to these three connectors using this wiring diagram, these three wires connected to these three points on my JBE module, and then pin 38 and pin 22 on my JBE module turned from this configuration into the later configuration, I'm only gonna to have to run two wires into the DME box in the engine bay. And I think that should be my car wired up. All right. I nearly forgot there is also the need to add some wiring changes to the DSC sensor. That's the sensor I mentioned at the start of the video that sits under the driver's seat. Um, the actual DSC unit itself is completely plug and play when you use the newer version. So you don't need to do any wiring changes in the engine bay, but you do need to change the wiring that goes to the sensor under the seat. I will touch on that when I actually get to the video of installing it. But until then, that is my plan for the wiring on the DCT swap. Um, I'm gonna head to BMW, pick up that seal tonight, get the rest of the DCT shifter and all the plugs and wiring tails that I think I'm gonna need out of the parts car tonight. And yeah, we'll crack on with servicing the DCT tomorrow and getting it into the E92, maybe tomorrow afternoon, maybe Friday. But with any luck, plan is to have it running by the weekend. We'll see how we go. And I will keep you guys updated on other processes as we go. Um, yeah, but until then, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.